Welcome to Lounge TV. I'm Uncle Larry and you're cooking with me. And actually we're going to be smoking something. That didn't sound right, did it? Well, we'll be smoking cooking, not smoking smoking. But smoking. There really smoking. should be another term for it. Yeah. Guys, um, we're making um, lamb chops or, or a rack of lamb on this and we're going to smoke that. This is the first time I've ever smoked it. I made lamb chops before. Absolutely delicious. I wanted to try smoking them to see what that's like. Um, so we got to make a paste for it so, so that we can throw them in the fridge and then we can smoke them tomorrow. Basically so, a marinade, right? It's, it's basically a marinade, but it's, a, it's more of a paste on it. You know, sticky, sticky. It's not, more, it's not that much liquid as opposed to right. know, pasty. So what we're, you're going to need is you're going to need some olive oil. You're going to need, I'm going to have to look at these, Tom, because I don't know which one's which here. We've got some sage. You're going to need some thyme and some rosemary. Unfortunately, Parsley oh. was not invited to the Scarborough yeah, Fair. So, so, yeah, so it should be like that, right? Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Well, from your angle, from mine, it's thyme, rosemary, sage. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, pepper, you're going to need a shallot. You're going to need garlic, some kosher salt, honey, I'm not going to sing the song yet, and a rack of lamb chops, or a rack of lamb, which is basically eight bones. And then, of course, you're going to need like a blender or a food processor so that we can mix this up for them. So we're just going to dump everything into the blender, right? Just to, like that, no. We've got to measure things out. We'll get to that in a second. First step before we make the paste is we want to cut off the excess fat and the silver skin on this, right guys? So you're going to have to get your trusty knife out, try not to cut yourself on this, and start trying to get some of this fat off of here, almost all of it. We don't want a lot of fat on this. Right, Tom? Correct. Okay. So we're going to continue to do this. These are just sawing at it and peeling away, right? Yeah. Trying to, trying to not... <laughs> not give you can leave a little meat. fat on there. I mean, fat's flavor. We know that. But try not to, you know, try not to have too much on there. This is a little too much. I'm going to chew it on it for a week. Yeah. And that's no good. It's almost like skin in a fish, you know? A little bit, yeah. How many fish have you ever skinned, Tom? I've stood out there and watched you skin that fish. That is true. Plenty of them, right? Quite a lot. Yep. Especially big old stripers. See, I see that meat right there? I, that that sucks. I should have should have did a better job than that, right? But I didn't. Yeah, what's wrong with you? But I didn't. trash there might be some spots where you want to go and just if it's real thick where the fat is get a, get a little bit better job that don't get you don't have to get too carried away and I ha I happen to often do that don't I Tom yeah this is kind of a case where it's like the opposite of spices you can always take more off if you don't right pop off too much right yeah exactly It's just a little tad more right in here. Try not to put your fingers in the way. Might be helpful. Yeah. Yeah, you might need those later. Yeah. So anyway, that's 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 good enough. That's all I care about. Um, I don't see any silver skin in, on this side at all, uh, unless it's that. Which, uh, yeah, maybe it is that. Huh? I don't know. I don't even know what silver skin is supposed to be. it is this but if I can't get it off I'm not gonna worry about it that's the way to look at it it looks like a pain in the neck then you know it's the same thing that they say with ribs right you know for when you're barbecuing ribs some people will say you need to take it off some people say you don't need to so it's a matter of preference so this is how we're gonna cook it like this I'm gonna put a uh, Put this aside, I'm gonna put it in the fridge, as a matter of fact, back on, back on the plate, put it in the fridge until I am ready to 
make the paste, well, put apply the paste, the paste. On and apply it. Okay, guys, so we're gonna start with our shallot, which is, uh, shall I start with my shallot? It is that whole thing, I just chopped up the whole thing. It calls for um, two tablespoons, but this was, I mean, what, I'm gonna waste a little bit? I mean, come on, there's, it's a shallot. So chop them roughly, put them in your trusty blender or your food processor. Then we have, we're using dried ingredients for this. Fresh is always better, but dried, we're gonna use, this is uh, rosemary, I believe, and we're using, for the dry, we're gonna be using one tablespoon? Yes. Okay, I'm checking with Tom, because I don't remember everything. Now, this is our thyme, right? Mm -hmm. And this in here, we have, I believe, one tablespoon, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's dried also. Fresh is always better. Remember that. It, it, that'll be a little bit different, fresh as compared to, to uh, dry when you're putting the amounts in. And this is our sage and this is two tablespoons. Yes. Okay. Now we have here one teaspoon, a heaping teaspoon of uh, ground garlic. That what is the equivalent of two cloves? We have a half a teaspoon of pepper and a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Put that in there. Now, we have a tablespoon of honey. Um, if you have about an hour, we'll get this all in there. Now, we'll get that in there. Especially a rubber spatula like this really works really good for something like this. I'm going to try to get as much as I can in there because it always sticks to the spatula too, right? Get in there. Okay, and we have a quarter cup of olive oil, and we're gonna just pour that in there too, like that. Have all that goodness in there right now. And what I'm gonna do is put my lid on it. What are you backing up for, Tom? You scared? Right, because you've seen you've seen this before happen. Yes. All right. Now, we're just gonna pulse it out. Oh, first we're gonna turn it on. It's pretty important. And, why is it? Now, if you see that it's not really mixing up very well, take your lid off, get that in there. We might have to put a little bit more olive oil in here because we use dried ingredients instead of fresh. So we might pour a little bit more olive oil in there. We'll see. We want a paste. We don't want it. We don't want it watery. I don't think I have to put this lid all the way down. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to pour a little bit more olive oil into this. Give a couple glugs. Glug 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 glug. There we go. And now, see how that works. Okay, let's see what she looks like in here. Yeah, that's a lot better. It's a little watery, but I'm gonna try to get all this stuff down in there because it went all over the place as usual. And uh, again, you want it, you want it, that it's going to stick to the uh, stick to the meat. It's a little bit watery than a paste would have been because we used dry. Because my wife forgot to pick up fresh, so I'm blaming it on her before she went on her big adventure uh, with her mother and left us here. She forgot. She went shopping, and I guess she forgot that she got the she got the lamb. Thing. So I guess that's good enough, right? I mean, I mean, we'll see, right, Tom? Anyway, next time we're putting the lamb in the blender, right? That would just be silly, Tom. But then how are we gonna be coating all this okay, stuff? Okay, well that'll be the next step. I'll show you what to do now, guys. All right, so now we're gonna pour this on here. See, it's kind of it's kind of pasty, a little bit oily, right? Let's try to get most of it on this side and rub it all 
in there like so. Let it stick to that meat like that. And then I'm going to put it, the rest of this on this side like this. Yep. Apply the paste. Apply the paste or the oil in this case. Get that all over that meat like that. You want it to stick everywhere, guys. Don't forget, we're also smoking this too, so we're gonna get a nice smoky flavor on this. I would put it, I get, if you have a large Ziploc like this, put it in that, if not, put it in handy wrap. I'm gonna put it in like this. And I'm also not gonna waste any of this stuff. Put the rest of it in here like so. There we go. Again, put that on the meat, just let it sit there like so. I got onion like juice in my eyeballs right now. Well, you know, the. That's got a sting. Up. When it burns your eyes. Okay, so now I'm just gonna try to get the air, as much air out of this as I can. And close that up. Pop her in the fridge, pour her out tomorrow. You can do this up to 24 hours, guys, before you're actually going to start smoking them. Uh, if, if it's a little bit shorter, if it's a little bit longer, that's fine. But I mean, you could be just a couple hours. It's up to you. Uh, we're not cooking these till tomorrow, so we're good. Just like that, a day's over. You see how fast that happened? That's how it really happened. Well, to me, it seems like that. Guys, with our lamb, we are going to have mashed taters. And what I have in here is probably, they were like four, four or five, they were pretty large potatoes. And I, I love garlicky potatoes, so we have the garlic in there. We're gonna get them boiling, but we don't need them boiling right now, guys, because it's gonna take an hour for these things in the smoker. And speaking of the smoker. Just an hour. In the smoker, and then I gotta finish them off on the grill to get them nice and charred on the outside. So, first thing you wanna do, start up your smoker. First thing you wanna do, make sure your gas is on. We turn it off all the time. I filled my water tray up with water. Ugh. My knee's a little swollen today, guys, so I have to, uh, to go down like this. So anyway, now we're gonna smart, smart our snoper up. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're gonna start our smoker up. So put that over to the light. Try to get it to the light up. There we go, it's lit now. All right, so we want it at 225. So what I'm gonna do, close this up and I know about where that is on here, so I'm gonna put it there. Uh, a little bit higher than that right now. Um, get that going. As soon as that gets to 225, we can we can put the ugh, the rack of lamb in there. Finally there, 225. 225. So what we're gonna do is open up our rack here. You ever think Dr. Smoke has smoked lamb chops? Dr. Who? No, 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 no. That, that's, a, that's a British TV show. I said Dr. Smoke. Who's that? Anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on my top rack in here. Stay there. And all right, here we go. And I am going to put this on there. But I am turning this over like this. Like that. There we go. I'm gonna put that like that. Now I gotta get a thermometer. I'm gonna lose I'm losing a lot of heat now guys. I'm losing a lot of heat. I'm gonna try and find a nice spot for this. No, oh, I forgot my glove didn't I? Gotta have my trusty glove on guys. Pull that out a little so I can get this probe in there. You don't want to hit the bone but you want to get it into a spot so that you can get a proper reading. Put that there for now. Close that up, let it heat back up. Turn my... Turn my thermometer on like so. I'll put that right there. And now we can throw some smoke in here, so. On this one, this model comes has a little drawer comes out like that, which is pretty pretty handy. Doesn't uh, lose as much heat right. out of that front vent. And I'm gonna take a handful, a little, a little in there like that. 
get that leaf off of there because I don't want any leaf. Uh, you don't want smoke smoke. Uh, okay, so just lamb. put that in there like that. We got we to gotta get it back up to temperature. And then I I forget what the temperature we want to wait till that. Gets. 225, wasn't it? No, that's the smoker. I'm talking about the meat. Uh, um, I'll let you guys know. I got to check the recipe out for what the internal temperature we want that to be before we put it on the grill. I searched. It was exactly what I thought it was. I just didn't want to say it and sound too stupid. Um, the internal temperature of this is what we want to cook it to is 120. And then when we put it on there, we want it to go up to 135 because we want them medium. We don't want them. I don't like medium well. I like medium. I like them a little pink in the middle on these. Um, yeah, so right now we got it at 225 perfect. Letting it go for about a half hour. And then we're going to put more wood chips in there. And that'll probably be the last time because it should take around an hour in the smoker, guys. See, not quite there yet. Not quite there, but it's getting there, right? So I got to put more smoke in. But before that, I want to show you what we did here. First, we're going to open this up real quick, guys, so you can take a peek I at didn't it. I can see it through it, but okay. Oh, oh, it's getting there. Look at that. It's cooking. It's cooking. Okay. So, oh, it smells absolutely wonderful. Um, we turned them on the rack because the bones were starting to fall through the racks because they're very small bones. So that way they'll stay on there like that. Should have put it like that to begin with. It was actually Tom's idea after that. He said, uh, don't you think you should turn them? Because uh, they're slipping through. Okay, this is what the design is all right there. It sticks, I think it swells. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, but I guess it does. Uh, heat, ex heat makes my looks fan. Yeah, so I guess it swells from that. So now I'm gonna put more wood in there. I only got enough work twice to to do this, so I'm trying to get everything I can in there. Okay, so that's hot. That's a hot. That's why you have one of these. There you go, and that's all we're gonna need for for smoking it. I mean, because it's 99.7 right now, we're only taking it to 120. So it went up. What was the temperature before? Tom? Two degrees. Huh? It went up two degrees. No. The first time that you went over there, what what did it say? 47? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's already, you know, it already went up, what, 53 degrees? Because it's at 100 right now. We only needed to go, you know, less than 20 degrees right now, and then we can uh, get the grill going. I also, Tom, I also turned on the potatoes so that we can get them going, too. Because uh, we want kind of everything to be... I want cold potatoes or I don't want cold meat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. What was that? Okay. Still not quite there yet. Hey, it's 110, but it's time for me to start my grill up though, guys. So I'm going to turn my grill on to get that nice and warmed up for this. And I'm going to put it at like almost high like that. Let her warm up because we want to get that seared on the outside nice and crusty. It's almost there guys. I mean it's going up fast now if you look at it. It's and if you notice that's the one thing I like about this smoker. It keeps the heat pretty even. It's not that hard. You might have to adjust just a little tiny bit. Look at that smoke coming. Oh applewood. Oh that's delicious. I just want to go up and bite an apple tree now. I don't think you really do. No, I don't. So we have nine more degrees to go on this, and then we can pop them on there and cook them on there the rest of the way, and easy peasy. 120, we're here. Here we go, guys. So now, even though I had my grill open, forgot about that. Let that heat up while I'm going to take this out of the smoker. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up. First thing I'm gonna do is take this out. We don't need that now. We're gonna use a different thermometer for that. Okay, so I am going to get to this. Take a look at those ribs. Yep. Here we go. Look at that, guys. That looks delicious. So we're gonna put them on here for right now. We are not done. Just to let you know, we're not done. Gonna we're not done up. yet. Now I am going to bring this over to the old grill. 
and then I am going to put them this side down first guys there we go about two to three minutes on each side we want the internal temperature 135 now however I want to get the bottom side done then the top to get that on the outside and then we'll did you say it was like two ish minutes I thought you did two but... to three minutes something like that I'm going to close this to get that nice and hot so guys I just realized this we're gonna do this side first and the reason why we're doing this side first is so when I turn it over it's easier for me to probe the meat to find out if uh, it's it done is. same thing so it is time to turn them over like so to flip to flip them and we're gonna put them over like that and we're gonna get them going now uh you know what I think I'm gonna take it for another minute on this side Tom yeah yeah I just think I wanted a little bit darker on that one side of the uh you know the fattest part of the meat okay just for another minute or so so I flipped it over guys now I want to just check it out oh it was 135 for about a second all right so a few more minutes or an, another minute or so let me just check it in a different spot Woohoo! that's hot my hand is burning up it is done that's done that's definitely done all right so and the thing is you can let it go less than that you can get 125 you can you can have it um because if you like it on the rare side and don't forget on the there's a skinnier side over here that's going to be more done than that side let me turn these off close this up and get yourself a piece of foil put over top of them don't make it tight and you're just going to let these guys rest now for about 10 minutes before you want to cut them up and then we can get our potatoes ready in the meantime okay so our potatoes are done we already got the water all out of there so now i'm going to start putting in some butter i on ours we like them very buttery so i am putting almost three quarters of a stick of butter um, now maybe you don't like butter or you want to eat low fat or whatever um, use what you want to use in there this is how we like our potatoes so that we are going to use that i'm going to let that melt a little bit before i get into the we're using heavy whipping cream you could use uh two percent milk whatever you want to use for your potatoes that's fine i mean they and, could even be heathens and have like instant potatoes or something heathens boy that's cruel tom but you're right because instant potatoes are not they don't even taste anything like real potatoes to me exactly our potatoes may not be the healthiest but dang are they good believe it or not my sister loves instant potatoes but she doesn't like real potatoes jackie wacky jackie I think that might be where our name started from. So anyway, I'm going to let that melt, melt for a minute and then we'll come back to putting the cream in. So we let that butter melt. Pretty melted now. So now I'm going to put a little bit of whipping cream in there or like, like I said, remember, don't put in too much of it at the beginning because you don't want them really, really too thin, right? You don't you want can, potato soup. Exactly. You can, you can put it in later. I like to use a hand masher. You can use beaters if you want to, if you want to. Um, I don't, I like lumpy potatoes. So we're just gonna. Gotta kinda mix these up. I don't like them real lumpy, don't get me wrong. I don't want big lumps of potatoes all over the place, but if I have a lump in my potatoes, I don't mind that much. Do you mind, Tom? No. Nope. Good, because if you want any of these potatoes, you're gonna have to. But if you, if you use a mixer, you get all them lumps out of there, right? Hey, here's a fun fact. Now see how this is right now? That's not bad. The, the texture of that, that's not bad at all. If you want them a little bit thinner, put a little bit more in there. I'll, just a little bit. That's all I'm going to need on that. So what was your fun fact? My fun fact, my one brother, right? I have two brothers. Everybody should know this by now. One, one passed away, one is still alive. Well, the one that's still alive, when he was a kid, he didn't like mashed potatoes. Well, our kitchen table had a drawer in it. <laughs> it 
so he would put his potatoes in that drawer. Well, a year or so went by <laughs> and my mom went in the drawer for one reason or the other. Guess what she found? A drawer full of mashed potatoes. A drawer full of mashed potatoes. So I just think that that's kind of funny. Anyway, we, so now it's salt and pepper to taste, guys, right? So I'm going to put some pepper in there. You know, potatoes always need salt, right? Yeah. I mean, like, it's like when I was like five and I always threw my Flintstones vitamins behind oh, the TV. Yeah. Oh, that brings up another story. I remember Tom, yeah, he had to take a vitamin every day. Flintstone vitamin. But like chewable some, ones, not gummy ones. For some reason, we told my mom that he, because my mom would see him on the bus and stuff while we were working. We told her that he doesn't like the red ones. He likes all the rest of them but the red ones. My mom got it confused and said, thought he only liked the red ones. <laughs> he didn't like the other ones. So she was obviously giving him a red one every day. So I came home one day and I was over by the TV and I looked behind it. There's like 10 or so red Flintstone vitamins laying behind the TV. So I, I, I think this is one of the few times that Tom actually got in trouble with me because I asked him about when he came home, I said, and you were just only like five like, or six, yeah, like something five. like that. You were in kindergarten or first grade. I was like, are you taking your vitamins every day? And he lied to me and said, yes. And I said, smack on his butt. I said, that's for lying to me because there's your vitamins right there behind the TV. And Tom understood then that it was like, had he told me the truth and said, no, grandma keeps giving, he would have never gotten a, a smack on the butt. It wasn't even that hard. I don't even think you cried, Tom. It was traumatic. Was it? I don't know. <laughs> to this day, right? All right, so now- I think it was a lot more than just 20, though. Like, I, that was, from what I remember, that was a long, ongoing thing. Oh, gosh, I love potatoes. I could eat this whole pan. You better not. Or pot. No, I'm just saying. You know. Tom knows. I, I could eat a lot of potatoes. All right, so I am going to go to the next step, which is going to be cutting our chops up and plating. All right, guys, so now I'm going to cut these ribs up. Nice and rested. Or chops. I should say trop, chop, chops. Like, make sure you don't get the bone. Pretty important. I gotta, find, I gotta find where exactly it is here. These bones are connected, guys. Guess that. Guess what? There we go. You might have to break some ribs in this, right? Because these bones are definitely. I can't find the uh, spot to go. There it is, right there. There it is. Now that one's the rare one, Tom, right? Mm -hmm. This end is gonna be well more well done, so I'll go over here. I've gotta find that one spot in between those bones. Somewhere's over here. It's not that easy, guys. It's easier on this side. It's there somewhere. There we, there we go. So you get your choice. What would you rather have well done or on the rarer side? Oof, that's a tough choice actually. All right, well, I'll give you two well done ones. I see how it is. Well, they're not really well. Look, see that one's got pink in it. And it should have pink in it. Right. That's how you want it, right? I just want to cut a couple of them off right now to get you get you going. I'll eat well, rare you. ones because I love, I love rare. And that's what I'm saying, guys. It's like you don't know exactly what it is. It was one with 35, so we're good on that on that end. So, how many potatoes do you want, Tom? You want a lot or a little? A decent amount of potatoes. More than that, for more. sure. Tell me when to stop. Good. Ah, uh, more than that. Jeez. Tom one likes potatoes. Scoop. One more scoop. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of potatoes. You're cutting into my potato. Okay, that so... That might be like one of those potatoes that you... that went into the thing. I mean, just like three left. I'm gonna put them just like this, guys. In there for a plate. Look at that. Let's clean that up a little bit. That looks delicious. Alright, you said those are mine. Yes, that's yours. There you go, guys. This is how you smoke lamb. I am going to just... Because I, I, you know, everybody is always like, "We'll taste the piece." 
I'm gonna taste the piece right now because I'm very curious to see if that smoke got all the way into here. Mmm. That's what I'm talking about. Oh. Ah, oh, there was black. I get it all over my face. Now that I can tell. Alright. That's delicious, guys. If you've never had lamb chops, I tell you, and if you have a smoker, try it out. Delicious. So guys, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. There's a little bit more rare than I want to eat them, right? Tom's end was fine. But these were a little bit more rare than I wanted to eat them, so it's like, and they're not, you could still eat them, because it says 125, you can eat them, and these were 130, was about 130 to 135 was that one end. But I want it cooked a little bit more for myself. So I just started my grill back up, threw these on the grill. I'm gonna cook them a little bit on each side. Just don't dry them out. And then you should be set, like, especially the thinner ones, like this. This doesn't need much, so I'm just gonna cook these just a little bit on each side, like that. And let them go. And that's, again, guys, it's not that hard to, to figure it out. If it's, not, if it's not cooked all the way that you want it to, fire your grill back up and cook them a little bit more on each side. Tom said his are absolutely delicious on that end. So guys, until next time, I hope you like this. Until next time, grab yourself something cold to drink, put your feet up and relax. I'll meet you at the lounge. Oh. Are you back to eating now? Yeah, you can go back to eat.